All right, now at this point I've created a pretty interesting sound and what I think I'd like to do is use the arpeggiator in order to play this in a more interesting sort of rhythmic way. Before I do that though, let me go ahead and make this sound a bit more interesting. I use my LFO in order to modulate the uh, tuning of oscillator one, which is being synced to oscillator two. And I think what could be interesting is instead of using, I think before I was using a sine wave, but I could change this to a random waveform. If I keep going, there we go. And I'll make the amount relatively minimal. Kind of like that quite a bit. And again, if I have the LFO set to my free mode, then it doesn't matter when I play the note, the LFO is just running freely in the background. So every time I play the note, there's a chance I'm gonna get a different sound, a different setting there, which will be useful because with the arpeggiator, I wanna make it so that I can either hold down one note or multiple notes. And instead of playing those as chords, it'll cycle through those in some sort of rhythmic way. So in order for us to take advantage of this, let's go to the ARP page. I'll press ARP, which is right here. ARP is short for arpeggiator. Now, in order for the arpeggiator to do anything, what I need to do first is I need to turn it on. It says MOD, that stands for the arpeggiator mode. Right now it's not doing anything. Let me go ahead and change this to true. Now with true set, it's going to play the notes that I'm holding down uh, in order. And we see there's speed, which is set to six. I'll explain that in a second. But next to that is range, R-N-G. Range just basically means how many octaves is it gonna span uh, before it starts over at the original note that we played. So right now it's spanning three octaves. I'm gonna change the range so that we just stay on the octave that we're currently playing. So we have that there. Now the speed setting is pretty interesting. With the speed set to six, each note will sustain for a step length, for a 16th note. If I change the speed to three, then it's gonna play twice as fast. If you're trying to make more video game type sounds, having to speed it one with the arpeggiator could be an effective way to go about that. If I want the arpeggiator to play twice as slow as the regular setting, I can just double the speed from six to 12. And then that's what we get. Now, next to the range parameter, it says LEN, which typically stands for length. And if I press this button in, I see the length of each note is a 16th note. So when I double the speed, we're hearing a gap between the notes because each note is now playing for double a step length, which would be an eighth note, but the length is only 16th notes. If I push in on the knob that's associated with the length, I can turn this and I can more easily jump from a 16th note to an eighth note length, an eighth note length. And there we go. Now I think a 16th note length will be fine. So let me just go ahead and go back to where I was. I'm gonna change my speed back to six. And I'm gonna go into my amplitude section here and I wanna make it so that this note is not so long. So I'm reducing the decay time. I have an immediate attack, very short decay time. The volume decays to zero sustain. So if the arpeggiator was off, if I play a note, it dies off very quickly, but using the arpeggiator with that very short volume envelope, it's extremely useful. Now we can actually design our own arpeggiator so that we can hold one note down and still make that trigger different notes. Below the ARP, it says setup. And if I hold function and press ARP, we'll look at that. Now I can actually create my own arpeggiated sequence. If I hold a note down, if you look at the trigs on the bottom, we can see the LED light is flashing every time a note is played. I can actually change the length of the arpeggiated sequence and I can also change what notes are generated by each individual step in that sequence. I can also mute certain notes out of the sequence. So let me make this a little bit shorter so we can hear the changes more quickly. If I wanna shorten the length of the arpeggiated sequence, I can use this knob E. You see where it says length, it says 16. So the arpeggiator is a 16 step sequence. And I'm gonna reduce this to, let's say eight steps. All right. So now we can see the last eight LEDs for the last eight trigs are off. And if I hold a note, it's just cycling through those first eight. If I hit any of these, I can deactivate that step. It 
So now I have a little pattern here. If I want to be able to, let's say, change the pitch of one of these, I can simply hold down a step. If I'm holding this down, it's selected there. And then I can use this knob here to adjust the pitch. Here it says OFS, that's for offset. So I'm offsetting the pitch by three semitones for the second step. Now, if I hold down more than one note, whatever note lands on the second step will have its pitch offset by three semitones. Very nice way to, again, just add some more variety to our patterns that we're playing. So I'm gonna take this last step and I'm gonna offset this by seven semitones. There we go. Now I'm gonna hold down three notes. And actually, let's just hold down C and G. Very cool. I like that quite a bit. Now, let's go ahead and back out of this. And maybe I want to add this to my sequence. Right now, I'm starting with a blank pattern. If I press play, I want the note C to be, actually, I want C and G to start at the first step and be held for all 16 steps. Now, I could record this in real time. But instead, what I'm going to do is use my grid recording mode. I'm going to place the note C on the first step. Hold step one, press C. Now by doing that, and actually I think this is transposed down an octave. Yeah, I don't want that. Let's turn that off. All right, now the issue, this single note is not long enough to sustain for 16 steps. If I want to change that, I don't change that in the arpeggiator settings. I have to change that in the note settings. So I go to note. I'm gonna hold this note down, and where it says length, I want this note to be 16 steps long. So I'm gonna change this to 16. All right, so now we have that note. That note is sustaining for 16 steps. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna to go to my arpeggiator settings. The arpeggiator settings cannot be parameter locked, unfortunately. When I found that out, it kinda of bummed me out. But what we can do is we can automate the note offset so we can make it so that when we play this step, it doesn't just play C, but it also plays some other note that's a few semitones above or below it. Now, when I decided that I like this pattern, I was playing C and G at the same time. If C is my first note, G is seven semitones above that. So I'm gonna hold down this first step and I'm gonna parameter lock, adding an additional note. And this note is going to be seven semitones above the note that I played. As I adjust that, if we look at the keyboard, I see the root note that I played and I see the note offset that I've added. Now let's hear how this sounds. So that sounds more like the pattern that I had going before. And with my very weird oscillator synced sound, it actually works out pretty well. Let me get out of my grid recording mode. I'll go over here to the amplitude sections. Let's maybe increase the decay time a little bit. Or instead of doing that, maybe increase the release time. And a sound like this works really, really well with a bit of reverb. Or a little bit of delay. That's quite nice.